Welcome. Most of us know Falun Gong as a practice that's being persecuted by the Chinese Communist Party. We see them outside handing out flyers, participating in parades or protesting outside of Chinese consulate. But what is really Falun Gong? What do they stand for? And what are the challenges that are facing in China today? Today with us, we have Joel Chipkar, spokesperson for Falun Gong. Welcome, Joel. Thanks, Dan. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Well, uh, first of all, let's, uh, let's have you tell us what is Falun Gong. Falun Gong is a, a profound spiritual discipline that has a strong belief in the divine or in gods. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the goal is to help people to reach their enlightenment. Um, it's different from other spiritual disciplines because it's a full cultivation practice for the mind and the body. It incorporates theory and also five sets of uh, beautiful, easy to learn Qigong exercises mm -hmm. to help strengthen and purify the body. Uh, the basic idea of Falun Gong is to have a human being assimilate as close as possible to what we believe the universal characteristics of the universe is, truthfulness, compassion, tolerance, or what the Chinese call Zhen Shen Ren. Mm -hmm. And uh, Falun Gong believes that if you rid your mind and your body of attachments and addictions to, let's say, anger, you know, lust, jealousy, um, and try to assimilate yourself on a daily basis to truthfulness, compassion, and tolerance in all your actions, then you will be that much closer to being able to unlock your enlightenment. Mm -hmm. It's, uh, many people have found answers to a lot of the questions they've always had about spirituality and about why we're here. Mm -hmm. And uh, Falun Gong is also a little bit different than other religions and spiritual disciplines because there's no worship, there's no ritual, mm -hmm. and there's no money involved. It's completely free. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. Um, you know, it, it is well known that the Chinese Communist Party is against Falun Gong. Mm. Why is that? Well, it never was like that all the time. Uh, mm -hmm. Back in the beginning, uh, Falun Gong was as popular as the North American SUV. <laughs> um, it was supported and awarded and even endorsed by the Communist Party. Really? The Public Security Bureau, which is like our FBI or the CIA, also awarded Falun Gong for bringing back the crime-fighting virtues into society. Mm -hmm. It spread faster than any spiritual discipline in history. However, in China today, all religions, all spiritual disciplines, everything must be controlled by the party. Mm -hmm. If you're not, you're attacked, mm -hmm. right? In, uh, in the mid-90s, the Communist Party approached the founder of Falun Gong, mm -hmm. and they said, we wanted to control this. We want to start charging money for it. We want to control it. The founder said no, and then Falun Gong pulled away from the Communist Party support. Mm -hmm. After a few years of abuse, in 1999, uh, the leader at the time ordered a, a survey, and they found out that 70 to 100 million people across China, including high-ranked members of the Communist Party, mm -hmm. the military, the police, were practicing Falun Gong. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, that was basically 30 million more members than that of the actual Communist Party membership. Wow. And because, this, because of this information, he ordered a violent crackdown on Falun Gong. Uh -huh. Interesting. Uh, yeah, we hear a lot about the, the crackdown, about the persecution from uh, uh, Amnesty International, from other organizations yeah. around the world, um, even going so far as um, organ harvesting. Yeah. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Today in China, over 100 million Falun Gong practitioners are forced into exile. Mm -hmm. There's uh, hundreds of thousands in labor camps today. The United Nations has stated that two-thirds of all uh, reported torture cases are that of Falun Gong practitioners. Mm -hmm. um, there's thousands killed in police custody. In uh, uh, the United Nations states, the United Nations came out with a report, and it states that we are concerned that the reports of arrest torture, sexual violence, deaths, and unfair trials of Falun Gong practitioners may reflect a deliberate policy to target Falun Gong. The cruelty and brutality of these acts of torture defy description. Mm -hmm. In China today, uh, in 2006, actually, uh, independent investigators uncovered that there were over 41,000 Falun Gong practitioners that were purportedly killed for their vital organs uh, to be used by the Communist Party and sold on websites and in state hospitals for up to $160,000 US each. 
the evidence was so compelling that in 2008, the United Nations asked the Communist Party twice to explain a discrepancy in their own documents of a missing 41,500 organ donors. Wow. And they wanted answers from the Communist Party to where these organs that were sold through their websites and, and their state-run hospitals, where these organs came from. Both times, the Communist Party refused to answer. Mm -hmm. Today, Falun Gong is the number one human rights atrocity happening in China. Wow, that is uh, that's quite astounding. Yeah. Um, now, I know that the Chinese Communist Party says that Falun Gong is a cult. Right. Uh, why is that? <laughs> well, first off, thanks for asking the question, too, because it's, it's a very important question. Yes. Uh, first off, you know, they use this as some sort of excuse. There's no excuse mm -hmm. for the murder and torture of human beings. There's no excuse. Mm -hmm. um, in our history, every genocide campaign, the number one weapon from Hitler's elimination of the Jews to the Rwandan genocide, the number one weapon is hate propaganda. Mm -hmm. If you call Falun Gong a cult or political or you take the teachings out of context to paint us as somehow exclusional or discriminatory, mm -hmm. this is propaganda. It's used to vilify the group mm -hmm. uh, and with an aim to have the international community turn its back on the persecution. In order to hide a genocide, you brainwash people to believe that these Falun Gong people, these Jewish people, these black people, these Rwandan people somehow deserve what is happening to them. Mm -hmm. It's the oldest tool in the book. Mm -hmm. uh, in the past 13 years, human rights groups around the world, almost every Western government and the United, United Nations has reported on the persecution, not as a political move or as a government trying to rid society of a dangerous cult, mm -hmm. but as an illegal persecution from the communist regime uh, uh, to, to eliminate a, uh, a religious movement. Mm -hmm. Consider this though. Falun Gong has been translated into 30 different languages. Mm -hmm. it's, since 1994, it's been practiced in 120 countries by millions of people around the world. In the last 20 years, not one Falun Gong practitioner has ever been arrested or convicted of a, an illegal activity or a violent crime anywhere in the world. Mm -hmm. That one fact speaks volumes, right? right. <laughs> right. Falun Gong is forbidden to take money or donations from people. Um, we are encouraged to do well in our families mm -hmm. and also in our jobs and in society. Mm -hmm. For the past 13 years, we've continued to remain peaceful during a violent persecution to get our message out there, right? Mm -hmm. Ask yourself this as well. Why is it, if Falun Gong is so bad in China, why is it that the Communist Party bans all media from reporting on Falun Gong in China? Mm -hmm. Why is it that any reporter who goes to China to report on Falun Gong is arrested and kicked out of the country, mm -hmm. right? Why is it that Amnesty International is prohibited from going into China to investigate the Falun Gong mm -hmm. persecution? If Falun Gong is so bad, then why is all these things that there's, you know, so-called doing in China not happening anywhere else in the world. Mm -hmm. It doesn't make right. any sense. Right. In 2007, Amnesty International came out with an urgent action bulletin and they stated as well, Amnesty International has raised concerns that the official campaign of public vilification mm -hmm. of Falun Gong has created a climate of hatred against them mm -hmm. which may be a encouraging acts of violence against them. The mm -hmm. communist government is famous for using the similar campaigns against the Tibetans, mm -hmm. against the Christians, against the Uyghurs in the autonomous region in northern China. Mm -hmm. Every year, the Communist Party is branded, uh, voted, one of the top human rights abusers in the world, right? Right, right? And it still astounds me how people can forget that and still be led astray by a Communist Party to hate innocent people. Now, um, Chinese Communist Party, it exists as a solitary entity in China, and um, they like to protect it, of course. Does Falun Gong have any political aspirations? Well, that's a good question, and that's also one of the pieces of propaganda that the, 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 the mm -hmm. communist government came up with, not to target Falun Gong, 
but to target the entire population of China. Mm -hmm. The Communist Party violently took over China back in 1949. Mm -hmm. And at that time, they imported communism from Russia into China. Mm -hmm. Ch China was never a communist country until the Communist Party brought it into China. Mm -hmm. When they did that, they brainwashed all the Chinese people through violence and through propaganda to believe that anybody who attacks or criticizes the Communist Party is political. And these people who attack the Communist Party are not only against the Communist Party, they're against China, they're against the Chinese people, and that they're traitors. Mm -hmm. So today in China, anybody who's branded political is a traitor, mm -hmm. right? So Falun Gong is simply standing up to protect their freedom to believe in their faith by this regime who's killing them. Mm -hmm. Falun Gong has never asked for democracy in China. Mm -hmm. We've never asked to, to, to govern China. We've never asked for the Communist Party to step down. Mm -hmm. All we want is an end to the persecution and to bring those responsible to justice. Mm -hmm. Let me put it to you this way. If Coca-Cola mm -hmm. or Nike started to persecute a group of people, yeah. and this group of people stood up mm -hmm. right, to protect, to protect themselves, would that be seen as political? Right. No, right? It wouldn't. It would be seen as a group of people standing up to protect themselves from a corporation that was attacking them. Yeah. This is the same analogy of what's happening to Falun Gong today in China. Mm -hmm. Falun Gong, though, does call on Chinese people to quit the Communist Party mm -hmm. because we believe that the Communist Party is actually an evil entity. Mm -hmm. And we also believe that in our lifetime, we will see the elimination of the Communist Party, not because of anything that an outside group is doing, but because of the evil acts that the Communist Party is responsible for. Retribution. Retribution, exactly. Mm -hmm. If you look back in history, they are responsible for the murder of 80 million of their own citizens. Wow. And we believe that anything with this sort of retribution, you know, you have to pay it back. Right. So anybody affiliated with this group will also have their souls, their souls will have to pay it back. Right. Now, um, if Falun Gong is not political and it's not a cult, then why is uh, the Chinese Communist Party really, really afraid of Falun Gong? Mm. In 2006, uh, a high-ranking Chinese Communist Party member, his name was Chen Yanling, mm -hmm. he defected into the West mm -hmm. and he answered that question. He stated that the C Chinese Communist Party could not understand Falun Gong's peaceful appeals to protect their freedom to believe. Mm -hmm. Now, they cannot let the international community know what has been done to Falun Gong in China. Mm -hmm. the, 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 the Chinese Communist Party is responsible for terrible, terrible crimes against humanity. And their main mandate is to cover up these crimes. And they do that by spreading propaganda and vilifying Falun Gong around the world. Um, now, I have talked to some people that um, Quite, don't quite understand why um, Falun Gong practitioners still go out on the streets and hand out flyers, mm. let's say, in front of the uh, consulates. What would you do if your family or your friends were being raped, killed, you know, uh, demonized? What do you do when those with all the power attack those with none? You stand up, right? You stand up and you tell the truth. Yeah. And this is exactly what Falun Gong practitioners are doing. They're standing up to try to get people to awaken and support the end of the persecution. Not for personal, not for personal interest or, uh, you know, not for people to come and learn the practice, but to save others. Mm -hmm. Falun Gong practitioners are out there in the rain, they're in the snow, they're in the burning sun trying to give you a flyer, not for themselves, but to help save others. Mm -hmm. You know, this is a selfless act, and in my eyes, these people are heroes. Right, silent heroes. Yeah.